And so we have to deal with this. There is a, our planet is in peril, and we need to be bold. It's one of the reasons why I signed on to the resolution, I co-sponsored the resolution for the Green New Deal. And there's a lot of people now that are blowing back on the Green New Deal. They're like, oh, it's impractical. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it's all of this. If we used to govern our dreams that way, we would have never gone to the moon. God, that's impractical. You see that ball in the sky? That's impractical. We, we, we are a nation that has done impossible things before. And my parents taught me, reach for the, reach for the moon. Reach for the stars. And even if you come up short, at least you're going to be hovering above the ground. You'll be soaring, young man. And so we need to be bold again in America. We need to have dreams that other people say are impossible. We need to push the bounds of human potential because that is our history. And when the planet has been in peril in the past, who came forward to save Earth from the scourge of, of Nazi and totalitarian regimes? We came forward. Who came forward to save the planet from, or, or, or continents from financial ruin? We came forward with the Marshall Plan. Our history is standing up and saying, look, humanity is in crisis. America is going to be light and the hope. He is saying that this Green New Deal, Barry, is like going to the moon. Um, he's making the correlation between how hard it was back then to fathom us going to the moon and how hard it is right now for us to fathom us getting rid of, you know, all the stuff that we have to make life very simple. Um, is he right and does he make sense? Well, I guess in Cory Booker's mind, it makes sense. The, in 1961, I believe, when President Kennedy talked about we're going to go to the moon before the end of the decade, it seemed impossible. But the, the corollary ends there, Jermaine. Both are very tough, impossible uh, needing of great scientific achievements in order to make this progress happen. The difference is the space program created incredible uh, scientific breakthroughs that changed life on Earth for the better. And as is often told by NASA, the inventions that they come up with, with all the thousands of scientists working in laboratories around the world to make this stuff happen, improve life on Earth. Cory Booker's analogy fails there because this Green Deal would, at least in the United States, destroy life as we know it. <laughs> we would be in, in buildings that had to be torn down or completely rebuilt with new kinds of electricity and new kinds of water heaters and new kinds of um, insulation. I mean, trillions of dollars to be spent with no money to pay for any of this mm -hmm. as if well you just sort of make a decision and cool stuff happens so the analogy is fallacious and one one was a, a tremendous success for the achievement of mankind for the human race and especially for American scientific um, progress the other would destroy the American economy um, and transportation and energy use as we know it for the glee of the rest of the world at least they would take our place and America would be gone and maybe from a socialist viewpoint of America is bad rest of world is good kind of political philosophy I know Bernie Sanders feels that way you know Khrushchev was one of his heroes he went to the Soviet Union on his honeymoon that's kind of the way he was uh, and still is and maybe these are the new Bernie Sanders whether it's Ocasio-Cortez or Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris or Cory Booker maybe they aren't as patriotic as you and me maybe to them uh, America as a third-rate country with virtually no transportation uh, and houses and buildings that all had to be torn down and no jet planes and no cars and no cows that fart um, that would be a good thing. For me, I like things the way they are. Absolutely, Barry. And 
what it sounds like to me is that it sounds like a new what I call a controlled deal. Um, if, if people aren't able to travel freely um, and they're not able to, uh, you know, make money, bury it, you can control their life. And that's what it looks like the Democrats are proposing through a lie of quote unquote um, green stuff, right? Uh, hey, everything has to be green, 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 green. Green means it's a lie. I, 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 I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> I've got some political irony to throw at you. I know this is going to sound weird, but hear me out for a second. All right. The weirder the party gets on the left, which, like I mentioned earlier in the show, Jermaine, everybody running for office in the Democrat Party so far is off the left wing plank, right? Mm -hmm. um, government pays for everything. You have rights to everything, even though they have no idea what the word R-I-G-H-T means. Just as an aside, right comes from the Constitution. If it's not in the Constitution, like, oh, free health care, or free education, or free transportation. They're not rights, they're privileges. They're gifts from the government, but you don't have the ability to demand it as if the Constitution gives it to you. So like you said, it's a favorite political ploy to name something a right, therefore you should vote for me because I'm gonna make this a right. It's a privilege, it's a present. You don't have a right to Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. You hope for Christmas presents. And if somebody likes you enough, they give you Christmas presents. You can't stand out in front of your house screaming, I have a right to Christmas presents, bring me Christmas. People will think you're crazy. Well, I'm telling you, someone that says you have a right to free transportation or the world has a right for free transportation is just as silly as the person crying because they don't have Christmas presents because nobody gave them any. It's not a right, it's a gift, and a gift is a privilege, okay? Going back to what I was gonna say before, mm -hmm. I interrupted myself, but I thought that was important. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. The way my mind works, I can't help it. Um, as the Democrat Party becomes more whacked out and proposals like this that are clearly bonkers are supported by more people who are actually running for president, you know who it makes look normal and more mainstream? Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Joe Biden. Yeah, yep. Hillary Clinton. They are way right of this goofball conversation. And Nancy Pelosi and I said this earlier, has already done it. She's already making fun of Ocasio-Cortez, her Green Deal or whatever she calls it, and shakes her head. Honestly, that's the smartest thing I've heard her say in all the years I've been following her in and out of the speaker's chair. Because the truth is, Jermaine, that this proposal is nuts, and anybody that supports it by virtue of guilt by association is nuts and this makes nancy pelosi look kind of mainstream dude and <laughs> it's gonna and you know what it's gonna make her more popular because they're gonna say well nancy's at least saying she's not supporting knocking down all the buildings in america and burying all the planes in a big pile and doesn't want to pay people who can't find jobs and refuse to go to work so at least she's not doing that. And maybe Hillary Clinton jumps in because it's rumored she's gonna. Yep. And she's gonna say, hey, I'm not crazy like them. I'm just a crook. And I'm a mainstream, <laughs> middle of the road crook. I should be your nominee again. It might happen. I know. And I'm telling you, it's almost as if, Barry, the play is set up for that, right? You put all the crazy <laughs> folks up front, right? Ha let them go have a good time. And then as soon as everybody's like, man, these people are crazy. Hillary Clinton rides in on a little dark horse, you know, um, Satan's horse. She steps off and says, oh, well, I'm not as crazy as those folks. Come yeah. with me. I'm just a criminal, but <laughs> I'm not crazy. So vote for me. 
And Absolutely. quite frankly, look, if I was Donald Trump or his advisors, I would tell him, shut up. Let these people talk. Mm -hmm. Let them show the American public how they're out crazing each other and just go off to the side and I know he doesn't drink, but I would say have a beer, but he doesn't drink <laughs> and celebrate the gift that is giving every day that the press glorifies this weird stuff because the American public, as I often say, is much smarter than the media and most politicians give them credit for. And when they go to vote, most of the time, they can feel a huckster. They can feel a fraud. And they certainly, they certainly don't want their houses knocked down, their cars taken away, and airline tickets to be illegal. And the people that eat meat, which is pretty much 95% of the country, want to continue to eat meat. Farting or not, they want <laughs> cows. 